So that's how I started. And then I started coming to New York City. I started coming to New York through TK Kirkland. I know, have you guys interviewed TK Kirkland? Yeah, we, 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 know, times. we know that nigga, man. We got some stories about my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything he says is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, he sounds like that motherfucker has been around and he'll be like this. See, I want to tell you motherfucker something. <laughs> <laughs> He listen. T.K. Kirkland is the reason why I went to New York City. Damn. He See, got me my he got me my first manager damn. because T.K. came into you know when I first met T.K. You know how I met T.K. Kirkland? How's that? I used to I met I was playing basketball with with Malcolm Jamal Warner. Malcolm Jamal Warner was doing a one man show in Chicago back in the day. And my friend, I had a friend, this chick, chick named Lisa Fisher. She was friends with Malcolm Jamal. And she had a fat ass, fine motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And so Malcolm, she introduced me to Malcolm. So we're all hanging out and shit. And then one day we had, we're at this poetry slam. And out, so we're hanging outside. And T.K. Kirkland, I'm talking to my this girl, Lisa Fisher, just chatting. And he goes, excuse me, excuse me. But is that your girlfriend? He goes, well, I would like to speak to her. So could you please step out of my way? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know what? I had to laugh. <laughs> that was the funniest shit. Because he wasn't even being, he was just going, I said, no, nah, I ain't talking to her. He goes, well, I'd like to talk to her. And you are <laughs> in my way. You know. And, both, and from there, that's when I kind of met TK. And then I started doing shows with him. And so he liked my style because I was this educated. I wasn't doing the gangster shit because I'm not a gangster, motherfucker. I'm just doing funny shit in front of pimps and hustlers. And I was just funny. Mm. So he said, he's like, you know what I like about you? I like that you're corny. I like your corny shit. Because <laughs> he said, you do that educated shit. I was like, fuck you. Motherfucker. <laughs> and so from there, we started working together. He became my big brother. Then he got me to go out to New York. He got me my first manager. And that's how I met, like, I started to meet Mike Epps and all. So TK was very, very, very poignant and significant in me moving, going to New York, trying it out. You know, I would come out. I would do the Peppermint Lounge in East Orange, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you heard of the Peppermint Lounge. but you going to go there, but we, I've heard of it. Woo-wee. We, I, mm. I, I, uh, yeah. You want to get beat the fuck up? <laughs> Bill Bellamy would be the host. And I would I would do all the fucking ghetto rooms in New York. That's when Def Jam was hot. Mm -hmm. That's when Pele Pele jackets were the shit. Yep. That's when that's yeah, when yeah. you saw everybody and the girls wearing Timberlands mm -hmm. and motherfuckers arms crossed, going, "You better be funny, son, or you done." You know what mm -hmm. I mean, that type of shit. <laughs> and I was the one Chicago dude. I was the sh one only Chicago guy really representing in New York for like ten years. I was the Chicago dude. I came on stage wearing wearing uh, Chicago Bulls t-shirts, making everybody piss because we was playing the Knicks. Busting. They hated me, but <laughs> I was earning my respect though. That's when I ran into Chappelle. I ran into Tracy Morgan. I ran into all the fucking badasses. It was, it was dope. And that's when I finally made that transition to move into New York City, man. So that's how it started. I moved to New York in 97. You know what's crazy? Everybody that you talked about running into, they still hot and still in the game today, which is real. You got to, you're damn right. Because it's a, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. And you train. You, first, first of all, you got to understand the first 10 years in comedy, 10 to maybe 15 years, you're just getting good. Mm -hmm. When you're 10 years, mm -hmm. you're just... It's like um my martial arts teacher told me. He says, when you're a black belt, that's when the martial arts begins. Fact. Because you've gotten everything is 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 second nature now. Because all the other belts were just getting you to be able to throw a punch naturally, kick naturally. Now, when you're a black belt, now you've started. Now you begin. It's the same way when you get that 10 years, 10 to 12 years in comedy. Now you've begun. Because it's second nature to you now. Now you have a voice. Like 10 years in anything. It's 10,000 hours. You all, you guys have seen Tipping Point. Have you ever seen Tipping Point or... The book Tipping Point is really good. It talks about 10,000 hours in whatever you do. That, and, yeah. and, and comedians think they're great at five years. Even when I talked to TK the first time, he goes, 
How long have you been doing comedy? I said, well, I've been a comedian. No, you're not. You're not a comedian until about 10 motherfucking years. I said, oh, and he was right. He was right. When I talked to Seinfeld, Seinfeld even told me when I was in my ninth year, Seinfeld said, hey, how long have you been doing comedy? I said, nine years. He said, okay, you're in kindergarten. You're like a nine-year-old. You're kind of a nine-year-old in comedy. I will never forget that shit. It's like, it's the truth. It's it, That's why you see Tracy Morgan still around, D.L. Hughley still around, Chris Rock still around, Louis, because it's a long journey, man. Mm -hmm. It's a long journey. And then once you get your foundation, it's like a building. Why are some, why do buildings stand for fucking 200 years? You got a foundation, mm -hmm. period. That's why, that's why the Wu-Tang Clan ain't gone. Nas ain't gone. Busta ain't gone. Busta just came with this fantastic album, Nas with King Disease. Why do you think the old school ain't gone? Because they have a foundation. Mm -hmm. you know, they ain't these right. mumble rapping fucking morons with skinny jeans. Come on. Or <laughs> so I hope I answered y'all. <laughs> Got some funny TK stories, but we'll talk about that maybe all. Oh, yeah. no, no, TK. It's that nigga, man. You see, everybody that everybody that we talk about with TK got nothing but good stories. Us personally, we got a lot of fucking bad stories. Listen, listen. I, I mean, the, the the fact that he stole Charlie Murphy's this, he stole. That's mm -hmm. all true. Yeah. I remember when TK one time we were doing a show in Chicago, <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 he's on stage, and there's policemen. Watching the show, laughing. TK's murdering. These police guys are like, ha, ha, oh, ha, ha. TK gets off stage, and they put him in handcuffs. Lock his ass. That's great. <laughs> and TK goes, yo, Godfrey, I'm going to meet you tomorrow. I'm going to get out tomorrow. So just <laughs> blah, 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 blah. The same cops that were laughing were like, all right, man, let's go, bro. <laughs> Damn. Oh, yeah. TK, I, dude. <laughs> wow, dog. What did he get arrested for? You know? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because there was a time where TK couldn't leave the country. Yeah. You know, because I traveled a lot. I would call TK from Turkey, from China, from different countries. And he'd be like, damn, man, I wish I could leave, but I can't. I'm on probation. I got it. Uh -huh. and, and I said, see, TK, you're the one that's corny because you don't get to travel. Damn. You corny local motherfucker. <laughs> But TK is 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 a funny ass dude. Yeah, he, you know, he he's he's very open and very honest, and the shit he says is the truth. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say he's 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 not gonna leave anything off the table. He's gonna tell you, even if you say a shitty joke, he'd be like, you know, that one joke you did was horrible. But mm -hmm. and I said and I tell him too, but mm -hmm. he can take it. You feel me? He could take it. So TK is the real deal, man. <laughs> the last time we talked to TK was about um we were going to try to get him back on. It was fresh off the Vlad interview that he had. He said, well, I made 21 racks off of that. So uh, we were like, well, damn, is that an invitation for 20? We... All right, TK, we'll talk to you later, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he made 21 racks, huh? That's that's that, that's what was told to us. I don't know. Well, that's some good fucking money, though. So that, that's how hell I, yeah. I, well, I mean, I was doing Vlad for a, for a long, for at least two and a half, three years, I think. And uh, I was getting good vis um. I was getting good visibility from that, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know me till the Vlad stuff, you know. I mean, they just weren't, a, you know. Sometimes you gotta redo shit for people. Yeah. To go, oh, that dude, you know. So I was doing Vlad. I don't know if you guys know about us disengage. I've just kind of separated myself from the show. Um, we know. I, I know you guys know everything with your, yeah, 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 yeah. With your damn laptops. Because I'm looking at it right here like this. Yeah, yeah. We got it. We got it. <laughs> So get into it, man. We're just waiting to see what you gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, so um, yeah, man. So I met Vlad, you know, through some people. You know, what's cool is like we all, me and Vlad, knew some of the same folks. Even our barber, we had the same barber, which is crazy. My boy Youssef, Diamond Cuts. Shout out to Diamond Cuts, six fourteen Eighth Avenue upstairs. Go fuck with them. They dope. Um. That's between 39th and 40th Street. <laughs> Cause you know, what was like, you didn't tell them the streets don't know. <laughs> was that in LA? No, this is New York City. New York, oh man. We right the street, all right, dope, okay. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm a, I, my haircuts are New York. When I go to LA, 
whenever I come back, my barber goes, oh, you was in L.A., huh? Look at that fucking hairline. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> they be looking, they be making 